<clears throat> knowledge and practice that we receive in a session if they are assimilated and absorbed <clears throat> the knowledge of the real self is revealed. So one master gives an example that during the day, moonlight is there, but it is not visible. See the logic. As the sun sets, moonlight becomes visible then it becomes prominent so here the sunlight is understood as the impurities of the mind a seeker unless he removes all these impurities it is not possible to reach to the higher state of mindfulness or meditation. We can benefit by this session only when we work on the mind. That is the main message. But then how the karma is linked, action is linked. Because if we understand if we clearly understand that whatever the action that we perform in our daily living, not only it is going to transform the mind, but it will help us to live in the state of mindfulness. Take another example of karma and the purity of the mind. You go to the coffee shop and demand a cup of coffee. So they serve us a coffee in a disposable cup. Do you dispose the cup before or after drinking the coffee? Just see that. You see, we are extremely careful in handling the cup of a coffee before drinking. And once we drink it, we throw the disposable cup into the garbage. It's very casual. Very casual approach. Once we have drunk the coffee and very careful approach when we are drinking the coffee. Why I said so? You know, this Eastern wisdom, knowledge and practices are like the disposable. Once you are there, you are there. It cannot be reversed. Knowledge applied, seeker applies the knowledge in daily life. He receives the knowledge in every session. He retains, he assimilates into the lifestyle. If we do not assimilate into our lifestyle, then the chains do not come into our life. Change does not come. So then there is another question, why the seeker who attends regularly and still he does not succeed. Many people join, they leave. 
master says they should continue. What is blocking that they are not able to contemplate and reflect in their daily life? They are not translating these principles into daily living. Or there may be another reason, because the past impurities are returning again and again with a greater force. So they are wonderful in a live session, and they feel they are the worst in daily life. They both should match other. Knowledge must be settled in the mind to manifest in action. <clears throat> it manifests in action, any, any action, in personal life, in professional life, in social life. <clears throat> But the state of the mind, that peace before, during, and after the action is same. That is the secret of karma yoga. Because life is action, and action is life. I cannot, I cannot dream that you know I cannot do any action, and I, uh, I have a life. There are many things, but uh, I will pick up one or two examples. The first principle, you speak a lot about real self. You start speaking about real self. No shy. No gay. But speak as less as possible about the material world. We don't need too much to speak about the material world. You know, if we speak less, half of the court cases will come to an end. And fighting in the politics will stop. Three fourths of the divorce cases will drop. Do you see that? So when we apply that into our life, you know, you asked me to talk about the Eastern wisdom, I will keep on. But when it comes to things, you know, what shirt I have to buy, I can buy any shirt. That very speech is an action between the mental thinking and the physical action. Look at the way the master looks at it, how subtle it is. Whatever I speak is an action between the mental thinking, the thought, motivation, and the physical action in day-to-day -day life. Jesus remained silent for many years. Mahavir, another great master, remained silence for six years. Buddha remained silence for another six years. So silence does not mean that I'm not speaking. Silence means <coughs> my mental thought, my mental thinking and action should go together. But when we start too much of thinking about the material world, it does not match. Because the thought is expressed ultimately into an action. Now see the other part, however, mind is not working rightly. Take an example of an animal mind. If we live with an animal mind, means impurities, instinctive and impulsive nature. Does tiger think that he is committing violence by killing the prey for food? There is no sin for the tiger. Does buffalo think that he or she is very obese? No guilt. Do, do you see that? 
So, no, okay, whatever I am, I am okay. I should not start thinking, you know, should not create a guilt, should not start thinking of the sin. Does your pen, pet think that you are crazy? No likes and dislikes. You can give your, you can send your pet to my house within a couple of days. So that brings us to the journey and understanding that we have to live wisely. To live wisely to means to think, to speak, and act wisely. To think, speak, and act wisely, we are a seeker. And when we are a super seeker, it is very easy to be into the state of mindfulness 24 by 7. You know what happens? <clears throat> I'm a small fry, but I'm just giving an example. Vivekanand lived only for 37 years. He wrote more than 200 books. They are classic books in Eastern West. Shankaracharya traveled at least five times the entire India. He lived only 32 years of the life, contributed more than 200 books. That is the power of Karma Yuga. Buddha <coughs> traveled entire length and the breadth of India, I would say more than 45 times or 45 years. He covered every village. He was doing karma yoga. The power of karma yoga beautifies your family life, your personal life, your professional life, your social life. Because it is guided by the higher consciousness. It is guided by the higher consciousness. It is not the journey. That is why I covered. It is not the journey to become number one. Huh? That you may remember. No. Ultimately, you have a burnout. So that is why it is very important to understand those simple principles of the Karma Yoga. And we can enter into Karma Yoga if we follow the triangle. Do you remember the triangle? I talk about the two triangles. One triangle, I said knowledge, desire, and action. But here the triangle is, I am a seeker. I am very clear about the subject matter. I want to know who am I. And the goal is end of suffering. And then we have fourfold practices. We will continue to discern and live in the state of a dispassion with the six treasures, <clears throat> you will see the life becomes beautiful. Both cannot go together. Means the impurities of the mind and these simple principles cannot go together. Are you getting it? You know, we are just entering into the secret and the steps of karma yoga <clears throat> now you see that many people feel that you know mindfulness is just sitting idle wasting your time no mindfulness will never be complete if we do not know what is karma yoga Without karma yoga, the impurities of the mind will never go. Those sense of anxiety, duality, conflict, they will continue to remain unless 
we start karma yoga. Be very clear. <clears throat> I have understood that anxiety is not good. That is my intellectual understanding. But if I do not interact with others free from anxiety, how can I know that I'm free from anxiety? Karma Yoga is very important. Do you remember when you say Karma and Karma Yoga? Right, proper, good attitude in the mind? That is Yoga inside and Karma outside. So when we do this karma with yoga means what happens? There is an absence of doership, absence of dualities, absence of anxiety, absence of doubt. Mind is very clear and it expresses itself into an action that continuously removes the impurities of the mind. If the impurities of the mind is not gone, we will not be able to achieve the highest. We get rid of the unfavorable conditions and situations in our life. Right and proper attitude, so simple. Think. This mind has a grudge against anyone in this group. How can I express myself freely? How can I act? How can I speak? You see the relationship between the mental thinking and the action. So if I have a grudge, I will definitely commit some mistake. That creates an unfavorable condition. I create an image about my honey. So my mental thoughts expresses in the same way. So I create an unfavorable condition in my life, in my personal life, in my professional life, in my social life. They are known as the sins in Eastern wisdom. I have committed a sin. So when we do the karma yoga, the mind becomes pure, calm, relaxed. It lives in a higher awareness. It lives in higher awareness. Ah, we, we did it. So now see that one is known as the karma karma. So now we are understanding the there are five or six groups of karma. Kamya karma. Kamya means desire ridden action. Our master says avoid it. Why to avoid it? Because ego is at the peak, working subconsciously. It is the animal mind working subconsciously, and level of craving is at the peak. Society demands it, seeker rejects it. Did you understand this point? Society demands it to be number one. Seeker rejects it. Nishadha karma, prohibited actions. We will talk in detail later. So just understand, first is Kame Karma, KK. Desire ridden action. The ego automatically reaches at its peak. The level of the craving is very high. Society demands it. Society enjoys it. And then the same society blames you.
I told you you should not have done this. But when you achieve success temporarily, with that ego, the society praises you. And then same society says, I have told you, you should not have done this. You should have been careful. This is now divorce. Uh, you see the level of excitement. Just giving the same example again. <laughs> Come on, hold on, calm down. First, calm down. Bring your ego down. Bring your ego. I will settle a score with him. Calm down. Calm it up. You're accumulating the sin in your life. And you think that you will succeed in this journey? Answer is no. Second is the prohibited karma. Avoid it, reject it. Ego is also working behind. I told you an example of this guy who drives so rash. He has a, I think, an orange rover without the belt. I said, what do you get? No, it's all excitement. I get stimulated. So think of this. That nishad karma, prohibited karma, what the society demands me to do it, to live in that particular system. Paying the taxes, one example. Not rash driving. <laughs> A lot of things. So nishad karma, prohibited karma, I must not do. To keep the mind pure. Society and the crazy friends demands it. You do it, you are punished. Sooner or later, you are punished. Second type of the karma. Inserting somebody. Fighting. Then comes the third one, is known as the nitya karma. Nitya means daily working. So I do you have, do you build an ego going to the restroom? Do you build an ego having a cup of tea? Do you build an ego while lying down on the bed and sleeping? Think. Oh, no question of ego. Similarly, we have to do all of our personal, professional, and social activity. Nitya karma. So the same kind of the nitya karma should be done in the society. Now I don't like I don't like this guy, and that guy called you, invited you, huh? with love and care. That why don't you join my celebration? And you avoid it. So we have to follow the social norm also. You see. You live your life casually, normally. OK, I will definitely attend your and a lot of celebrations and marriages and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, takes place. So these two types of activities should be done, must be done. I should do what I'm supposed to do. I should not do what I like to do. Do you understand that point? We remember that point. Why? Because if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, the mind will definitely have a guilt. Uh, uh, yeah, he has attended all the celebrations, and now, now, I did not. You will definitely have a conflict. So you follow the social norms casually. What is required to be done should be done. What I like to do, I have to check whether it is right or not. So these two types of actions, nitya karma, namitya karma. Now the last two types of the karma, I just give you the brief. Think over it and uh, contemplate and reflect. Your mind has a guilt, you will understand. Oh, it is because of this I have a guilt. 
I have an anxiety because of this. <clears throat> Many examples are coming, but you know, I'll restrict it to the last two types of the one is known as prayas chitta karma, PK. Prayaschitta means that we should repent. If we realize that we have a guilt, we have an anxiety, we have a duality, we have a conflict, it is definitely caused by the first two categories of the karma. Do you want to get rid of the anxiety? First, recognize it. One is the desire ridden action, second is the prohibited action that I have done. So here is the repentance means simple. You do the practice regularly for an hour. Repentance means you repeat it three times. No, no, I will definitely do three times. So when you are doing it two or three times or maybe four times, what is going to happen? That mind will remove that guilt. That is known as repentance is not that you carry forward, you think a lot. No, no, no. Simply doing any practice that will help me raise my level of awareness will calm me down. I have to repeat it again and again. You repeat three times and after that ask the mind, is there any guilt? Is there any anxiety? No, now it is not there. So let me live with that. And the last one is again a positive one. It is known as the Upasana Karma. We all follow certain kind of rituals. You know, the, the praying before eating, you wake up in the morning. So I taught this young girl, uh, there is another verse which says every day you wake up in the morning and you say that I will perform karma with the right attitude of the mind. Remember the works, the assignments and the agenda needs to be completed today. First thing. Second, I will rise in consciousness means I will remain mindful in my relationship every day. This is one way of doing the Upasana Karma. And second is, I will introduce that. I will introduce the mala working, that how to perform the practice with the hand, you know, the fingers mala, so that your mind remains or lives into that state of awareness. Six karma, six types of karma, three types of karma we must do every day. Nitya karma, Namitya karma, performing responsibilities and what I'm supposed to do in the society in order to keep my relationship intact. But other than I grow into that relationship. I, you invest in that relationship to be in peace and happiness, personal life. And the third is the Upasana. These three types of karma must be done for a couple of weeks, months, and years. You will discover you it has become your habit. And after a few years or a few weeks and months, your mind is always calm. The purity is attained. And we should avoid the karma karma, desired in action, prohibited action, and we should not give mind a chance to repent because we are already living in a higher level of awareness. It changes the life, it transforms the life. So you have to contemplate. So let us start our journey, eyes are closed. And 
I say closed. We will follow the same. You see that? Now understand all those karmas wherever it is applicable. I will talk about it. I say closed. The body is comfortable. <coughs> and moving the mind gently. You see, it is a mental action. Oh, that is also a karma, yes. We do action by thinking, we do action by speaking, we do action by physical movement. So move the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes, being comfortable. You feel the sensation. So your experience is sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Now allow the understanding. Are you not living wisely at this moment? Yes. Because I understand being comfortable comes from within. I cannot become comfortable. You can add adjusting your body, you're removing that pressure or the stretching uh, in the part of the body. You are removing that. And what is left is comfort. Do, do you see, you have a storm outside, you are standing outside the home and then you rush inside. You don't create calmness and peace. Inside the house, there is already a calm, free from the storm. That understanding is required in Karma Yoga. So it means, even during the practice of meditation, yes. And then, we are carefree, free from all the cares of the mind. 99% of the mind cares either because of the guilt I just talked about or because of the prohibited karma or because of the kamya karma. So if the kamya karma, I'm used to do it. I My mind will remain awfully busy even during the practice of meditation. And then I will blame the body. Body is moving. Do you see a higher state of consciousness? See the beauty of this karma yoga. So we are meditating also, but knowledge is settled. What knowledge? Karma yoga. So now we are mentally speaking the mantra. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. So mental action is done. You have to see the knowledge behind. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. May there be well-being for all. It's a common factor. Now understand another way what happens in Karma Yoga. So because of the right and a proper attitude in the mind, you are performing an action with a common factor. What is that common factor? Is the well-being. <coughs> oh, you are angry over me. Because you are also seeking well-being. Your approach is not right. That is different. But can you find anyone who does not aspire and desire the well-being? So, you know, you, your, your approach is now, you live in the higher consciousness, so you have nothing to react. You reject other person's action instead of reaction. See, that is why I have been talking about the common factor. 
Shanti means peace. So let may there be peace for all. You know, as if you are praying for everyone, you are identifying with everyone, irrespective of the person is a stranger, a friend, a relative, a different name and the shape and the gender. What is happening? The mind is going deeper within. You cultivate a right attitude. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Purna means completeness, sense of completeness. That real self is complete in itself. And that is what we are searching. So only you have a real self, no, not others, no, everyone. Why? Because the real self is only one. The space is only one. Your house is different. My house is different. Highways are different. Oh, so my name and the form, age and gender and the sex, I bypass it. Then only I discover that state of consciousness which I can see, feel, touch, that it is present in every being in this universe. See, even these thoughts makes the mind very humble purifies it. So with that attitude, we are thinking, speaking, and acting. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu auspiciousness. Where? Here and now. In what condition? In all the conditions. In what location? All the location. <coughs> perfect attitude. With that perfect attitude or an awareness, you are doing all your work daily your daily activities in the personal life, in the professional life, in the social life. Think what is going to happen in your life. So the mind is not running after any object or a person. If it runs, so it has a likes and dislikes. It has a likes and dislikes. It has an attachment and detachment. Then it has a desire. And a long list, the mind becomes impure. That is what we are understanding in order to progress and awaken to the higher states. So in that state, <clears throat> we keep the journey. <clears throat> we never say that my mind will be completely purified. It gathers a lot of impressions every day, every moment, from the memory. Subtle so ego takes over. We feel bad. <clears throat> So that is why a couple of active steps should be done regularly. And one of them, look inside 
Look inside the heart in the space, start dropping Om Shanti. So what you are educating the mind? Om Shanti, live in there, live in there. And keep the body steady and start breathing, quick and short breath through both the nostrils. Ask the mind that the breath should be rhythmic. Om Shanti continues and the body remains steady. You may do it longer one. Doesn't make any difference. Continue, do not stop. The mind will definitely ask you to stop it. But when you continue, you realize you can take over the mind. Just continue, body is steady, mind is dropping on Shanti inside the space in the heart. <coughs> and continue with the breathing. It. I'm not telling you how many minutes we have done. <clears throat> you may decide that you have to do it for five minutes, but your focus should remain on Om Shanti. It will remove the error in action.
the entire body experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Experiencer is there. Look at the breath. Experiencer is there. The natural flow of the breath, no change. Mind is not creating any challenge to the breath. Your breath remains more or less the same. You are aware. You are again an experiencer. <clears throat> Deeper than the breath, you are aware of the thought, feeling, amazes. They appear and disappear. Maybe a comfort or discomfort. You are an experiencer. We need only an awareness. Awareness of what? Experiencer and all experiences, experiences takes place in the mind. It's a game of the mind. One part of the mind becomes an experiencer, which I claim I am. And other are simply experiences. Oh, I'm knower of the both? I'm the knower of the both. I'm already there. Consciousness is all knowledge. Consciousness is the knower. Knower is the real self. Not the knower of the mind. Knower of the mind is the doer and the experiencer. When we live into that state, and do the karma, all karma becomes karma you. <clears throat> we'll continue with the semi-active step, Nyasa. Start breathing little deep, silent and slow. Not very really deep so that you find discomfort. Find out your belly moves a bit and the rib cage. Deep, silent and slow. Check that your inhalation and exhalation more or less are equal. Another important point is it is deep, it is silent, it is slow. No noise of the breath. You see, that's why I have categorized the breath. Quick and fast breathing. Long in the hissing breath. So here I'm saying deep, silent, and slow breathing. Because we have to change the mind, the attitude. So the moment you start inhaling, move the mind from the crown of the head down to the tailbone. And you start singing Om Shanti with a knowing what this thought Om Shanti conveys. As you exhale, mind moves, rises from the tailbone in the spine to the crown of the head, singing Om Shanti. You will, you will know the deep silence, slow breath, Om Shanti and the mind, they all three sink. That sinking reveals the knower. You are in action. Same way. We are in action in our personal, professional, and social life. As a knower, not as a doer. Not as a doer, ego is not there. Not as an experiencer. The mind is not worried. 
So no anxiety. In all actions, yes. Everywhere, yes. In all locations, yes. Beautiful. Continue. Now gently drop the deep silence, slow breathing. Looking in the cave of your heart, mind moves with the singing. Oh. Mind continues to move inside. And I'm using the phrase, when the, you see mind seemingly stops, you just drop the shanti find you are absorbed completely and that absorption tells you you are only a knower not a doer not an experiencer mind returns again no issue take it casually moving the mind once again in the cave of your heart mm -hmm. Simple.
You might have left Om Shanti, but if you not leave it also. <clears throat> that is where I started today's talk that these knowledge and the practices are like the disposable cup. But when we finish it completely, then only it can be disposed. You're doing nothing. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences and bring the hands down. So, how are you, Stephen? Uh, I'm good. Um, that was um, that, that was good meditation. Um, I, I, yes, I'm living uh, life wisely. 
Um, it, this was a, my, my meditation has been very easy for me to fall into these deep meditations. And I think as I explained to you before, it's like split into these two levels. Um, I hear you on one level and I'm in this deeper uh, part. Um, what I found interesting in today's meditation was as soon as you sang the last note of the Sarve Sham, my, my mind was just flooded with images and thoughts and something that hasn't happened in a while. And as soon as I recognized it, I, I actually shouted at it uh, in my own mind and said, stop. And it all just went away. I mean, it just dissipated into thin air and I fell back into this deep multi-level meditation. So thank you. Beautiful. One point worth mentioning, when that knowledge is realized in the mind or settled in the mind, all the thoughts and the past impressions and the impurities will immediately vanish. This is what his experience. That's wonderful. How are you, Teddy? Um, I heard you. I listen. I listen. I learn. That's all. Good. That's good. You're able to maintain that stillness. Uh, no, uh, uh, yes. That is wonderful. How are you, Jerry? David is not there. I wanted to say David and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, he's here in spirit. <laughs> um, it, thank you. It was great. It was um, it was deep. It was still, um, and also just uh, living wisely. I like that, and it works well. And then, if there's something that comes up where it kind of questions, am I li living wisely? It's uh, easy to discern. That's a beautiful. Yeah, that's another way. So when we live wisely, we are always, it is already supported, always supported by discernment and dispassion. And then internal voice is there that I'm a seeker. The seeker knows what to do, what not to do. Ashok, seeker knows what to do, what not to do. How are you, Ashok? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we have to remind always we are a seeker by using discernments and dispassion. Yes. yes. It is good, sir, going on well. Going on well. Calm. Yes. You see, Jerry said, living wisely, one is upset over you, and you are living wisely. So the mind says, this guy who is upset over me is also seeking peace, but his approach is wrong. So I have to say nothing. Did you understand that point? Yes. You see, you know, it gives more beauty to the mind. <clears throat> yeah. And then you can play with the anger and anxiety of others. <laughs> not, not in a right sense. <laughs> not in a right sense. Not in a... <laughs> How are you, Barbara? Why I don't hear you? We don't hear you, but we can see the movement of the lips. No, yes, the same problem. No way. I know your smile tells me the story. How are you, Vaibhav? Uh, sir, I'm good. Uh, I'm just listening to you. Uh, it's like that in the practice, uh, it was like all, whatever experiences I'm having is just happening in the mind and I'm at the back. 
so it feels like that i'm totally free from what is happening in the mind was calm relaxed yeah 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 that is the knower that's what i explain so all your past problems have gone yes sir good no i'm not talking about that no no worries you know. i'm not talking about that i'm just uh, giving you a reference so how are you anesthesia thank you um, it was very uh, deep and quiet and quick and uh, it was being behind thoughts emotions and images and i i have a lot of loose bumps lately yeah. and during my daily life as well <laughs> and this is a little bit as pleasure and fun to during contemplation process uh i, I don't know maybe my body re as yeah it reacts like this when i have an inside or just being calm i have all of these little loose bumps beautiful all the challenges that you told me before have gone or they are still there they are going they are um, going yeah okay pretty okay. really fast <laughs> <laughs> that is good well very fast that's very good that's very good no I, i'm not sharing what uh, we do and how are you sangeeta Yes, yes. You know, when we live into that state, what Sangeeta is saying, the mind is always full of gratitude. We do not practice gratitude. That consciousness is always full of gratitude. And it comes, it flows, the tear starts flowing. Tear starts flowing. We are already treating the path of the Eastern wisdom. It happened, I just remember an incident, you should know that, and think of it. Whether it is true, you believe it. Oh no, simply reason out whether it's a true or not. So it happened, you know, Upanishads, you know, these are the highest texts. So unknowingly, by mistake, I was teaching that in a group of 20 people in India. So one guy who received the knowledge in the mind 100%. First factor, but he was not a seeker. A lot of impurities were there in the mind. So what happened? He kept on crying loudly in that group of 20 people almost for an hour. He was throwing his arms. He was throwing his hands. No, I'm not scaring you. I'm just, I will tell you. And another guy, out of that 20 who kept on laughing i don't know whether ashok was there in the five days program i used to give five hours in an institution and he started laughing and he kept on laughing for half an hour So thank God these two incidents took place in the same group because no one can blame me. One is laughing, another is crying. <laughs> you see that? No, no, he's laughing, you know. You, you have to reason out. So understand that we are moving into the higher teachings if the mind is not ready, if the mind is not uh, pure, and if we are not living wisely, these experiences will come. Unusual. Now, you people say that, you know, no, 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 by practicing meditation, you become abnormal. No, because of the impurities of the mind. I'm not living wisely. 
So I have, I will tell you in these 40 years, whenever I, a couple of times, I thought that let me teach the higher one. And uh, these incidents took place. My master uh, was totally, you know, he said, no, never, never, never do that. You have to reason out that we should go step by step to reach to that state. So that is the reason we should continue doing the practice contemplating, reflecting, we should reach to a state that we have started living wisely. Take an example of anesthesia. So, uh, soul soulmate is there. So if you are living wisely, you have no problem. Soulmate will remain soulmate. Otherwise become soulmate. <laughs> Stephen likes this word phrase. You, you, do, you, do you see? That is what happens in our insight. The mind covers. So when you listen or read unusual experiences, you reason out. Are these experiences worth going with or not? So worth not going with, they are caused by the impurities of them. They are simply caused by the impurities of the mind. So I have to look inside me. I have to find out. I may have an impression stored for years against someone. They will blast and they will enter into my mind while practicing meditation. So we have done this journey slowly, step by step, to remain stable. Otherwise, you know, one day you first day you are attending the session and I'm talking of that and you start crying. So other people will feel, you know, this guy is this beer guy is wrong. He did something. So people take it as if you know the teacher has done something. So Think of this, reason now. Thank you. That is all for today. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Terry is left today. Huh? Terry, Terry left today. No, Terry, I talked to Terry. <laughs>